are you? Good morning, good morning. Let me make sure I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? I hear you perfect. I got you loud and clear. Okay, that's awesome. So you, how was traffic this morning? You traffic was okay. You definitely see it picking back up, you know. So it's, um, I come from Lakewood Ranch and I drive from Lakewood Ranch to downtown Sarasota. It's about a 20 to 30 minute drive usually. So not bad. It was moving. That's nice. Man on the street. Tell me how traffic is. That's, yeah, that's right. Right. <laughs> update. That's the updated 830 with Dave. You know, we get it. <laughs> yep. And the nice thing about the last seven days in our marketplace, not only are things picking up, but we have something really interesting going on that you and I have been talking about for the last couple of days, and that is the first time home buyer effect. And in Sarasota, the average price is only 280. Now that's pretty strong, but of the eight first time home buyers that I started working with since Friday, I've already gone to contract at a single family home in Sarasota, new construction at 266. Wow. Now that's an amazing payment because as you and I know if they're paying fourteen hundred dollars a month in rent now that goes straight to a mortgage and we're very excited our, uh, for those folks aren't we that's really great and, and those new homes have lower homeowners insurance which is part of the payment that we talk about and low taxes so those payments on two hundred sixty six thousand is probably going to be less than fourteen hundred dollars that they're paying for rent and now they have pride of ownership they feel good about where they're going and they're building wealth. Amazing, amazing, amazing time. Well, I love what you just touched on because that came up in all the real estate terms that we use. The number one, and well, there's like a top five questions first time home buyers are asking because there's a difference between PMI insurance, homeowners insurance, association insurance that's covered in the fees. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so when you look, when you make up a, a, a mortgage payment, you usually talk about principal and interest, and then you have taxes, and then you have insurance. That's called PITI, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. But then if you don't put 20% down, which many first-time homebuyers can't, you have this thing known as private mortgage insurance. And as a first-time homebuyer, there's so many options, Sandra, but two of the most options that we're using a lot today is 3% down on a conventional mortgage, and then we had 3.5% down on an FHA mortgage. The biggest difference I get asked all the time, which one should I do? And it really depends on how good your credit is. Um, and also the mortgage insurance on these FHA mortgages, that it doesn't drop off. So for example, a lot of times their parents will tell them, we'll tell them when you get to 20% equity in the home, the mortgage insurance drops off. Well, on these FHA mortgages, that doesn't happen any longer. It stays on forever. So the average person only lives in a home for five years anyway. So it's not a big deal. But for people that are going to be there for a long time, maybe the conventional way is the best option for them. Wow, that's exciting to know because I didn't know that you couldn't take that uh, mortgage insurance. Or I didn't remember yesterday when we were talking about it on FHA about taking that mortgage insurance off because it came up in our conversation of. Living in this home, you're probably going to be here about five years. So I'm glad you touched on that. Right, right. Because a first time home buyer is going to have a couple of things going for them. They're going to ha hopefully have a couple of uh, boosts in their income based on how well they're doing at work, right? Correct. Yeah, they had their boost in income and the equity. We always talk about this, and you know better than I do, but the average appreciation, it might be anywhere from 5 to 7% per year. So as the value of the home goes up and they can pay that mortgage down, you know, they get that equity that's there. So that's what we talk about in five years, you know, essentially 7% times 5, 35% that they're gaining in their investment, which is a nice for, you know, to build, to build wealth. So and these are all questions. Oh, I'm sorry. It, no, these are just questions that we have. Sorry. <laughs> so the nice thing about what you also touched in in this unique time, this is not pent up demand. This is our normal 20, 30 year old that we're always teaching how to move into the home. What's unique and special and wonderful for those of us who've been around 20 plus years, we've never seen interest rates 
at this level, which makes an amazing opportunity to get in a home, a bigger home than you could potentially have. What are the interest rates this week? And how do well, they- that's a huge deal. And I'm glad that you said that. I'm going to give you an example. So right now, the interest rate for a first time home buyer for most buyers is about 2.75% to 2.875%. Uh, for a 30-year fixed mortgage, whereas a year ago, for example, it was around 4%. So what that means for the person that's buying that $266,000 home that you mentioned, maybe a year ago at 4%, they can only qualify for $220,000. So they would not have been able to buy the home of their dreams in that new neighborhood in, in, in the area that they wanted with that kind of square footage, but now they can. So now you don't want to wait. Now's the best time because now you can buy more home and have the same payment because it's a lower interest rate. That's very exciting. And for somebody who's thinking, well, why do they keep talking about um, new homes? Well, we have a lot of choices. And you mentioned on something that's really important. New home construction insurance is less. We know why. You want to touch on the top reasons why it's less for a new home? Well, it's built to code. So in Florida, we have hurricanes, we have storms, although our area in Sarasota, we're pretty protected here, we're insulated on the coast. But yeah, the newer the home, the more up to date it is, and the better it's it's built better to the latest code. So you're going to get cheap insurance. And that's a big deal if you're looking at a home. So if you were to buy a resale home, sometimes the insurance could be about $2,000 per year versus maybe only $500 for a new home. That's a $1,500 per year difference, and I'm just on the calculator here, but what that means to you in dollars and cents, that's $125 less mortgage payment, okay, by buying the newer home versus a resale home at $125, you know, that's $1,500 a year you're saving, you know, in, in payment, that's, that's huge. Just to um, it couch that in a way how it applies in the real estate market, we look at that dollar amount and that mortgage payment amount and when we're counseling a seller to help them understand the market dynamics, we're showing them their main competition is the builders, not just what's sold in your neighborhood within 20 miles because people are shopping up and down 75 in this area because their job allows them to do that and it's so easy. And when we're applying the market understanding, it causes a change in what a buyer will be able to say, well, I can get new construction, my insurance is this, and you provide that whole list to them. And if I choose a home in a stable neighborhood, which is, I always love trees and stability and no more dirt, no more trucks, no more more noise, there is a downside to that. So there's that we're always bringing up those facts and those neighborhoods that are situated really well with beautiful trees, beautiful access, and beautiful either good at holding on to their community feel, then they're going to compete really well, but it's always comparing that value for that right now buyer. And we have a lot of right now buyers. And in all price points, I'll tell you a couple of numbers here. Um, we talked last week about the average per square foot on CSC Key in downtown Sarasota was around eight was at around eight hundred dollars a square foot. Now we have a new waterfront property at the Strand that's four hundred dollars a square foot, which is unheard of. It's very close to downtown Midtown, and then Longboat Key in the last thirty days, Longboat Key is an island, and it covers. Uh, such a distance that part of it is in Sarasota County, part of it is in Manatee County, and we have 35 miles of beach and five islands from Anna Marie down to Casey Key. And so Longboat Key is nestled right in the middle of that. You have to go across the Ringling Bridge and through Lido to get there if you're coming from Sarasota County and around the way uh, in Manatee County down from Anna Marie. So the nice thing is it's in between two access points a very long island but there is a longboat key city and when i pull that up in the last 30 days the average square foot price well they have 56 sales that's wow. amazing we had approximately 20 and 30 in sarasota and siesta key separately longboat key is a little bit bigger area but look at this 
their average per square foot price was $439 a square foot sold. So when I talk about the average per square foot price in Manatee County or Sarasota County, we have the first time home buyer effect, but we still have that group that are business owners from around the world that are looking to have water access, a lifestyle that plenty of available room to do anything with their multi-generational family. Longboat, uh, not just Longboat Key being multi-generational, but where you live in Lakewood Ranch, number one multi-generational community in the United States. So that is in Manatee County, most of, most of Lakewood Ranch is. When you come down university, you step into Sarasota County. So Sarasota County in the last seven days had 260 sales, 48 of which were condos. The average price was $280,000. This is a remarkable change from last week, only from I see the first time home buyer effect causing and, uh, that little bit of change. And we also have some move in ready opportunities from the builders in the area that are really, you know, there's six minutes to Siesta Key. And Right. That's really good. You know, you've been talking about multi-generational and the last few you know, months we've been talking about it. My eyes are open now. I'm looking and a couple of stories right here along Long Key that you're talking about. Kids are coming down. They've been vacationing here. Mom lives at a condominium on Long Key. They're from New York. They don't want to go back to New York. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so they, you know, they bought in Long Key. I got a call and I said, well, why did you buy there? Mom's there. We came down. We want to be a part of Sarasota. We love that that stretch of beach. It's paradise. Uh, so that's one multi-generational uh, idea that we talked about. And then another person came down from Michigan, and they were buying a home in that $280,000 range. And we started talking, like, well, how long have you been here? He said 20 years. And now his kids have kids. So it was first, you know, mom and dad came, son followed. Now they had their own kids. Now they're having kids. I'm like, wow, look at all these multi-generational buyers that you've been talking about. And now that I open up my eyes and I look around, they're everywhere. Um, so, so <laughs> I like having all these. Out. Yeah, if it's safe for the little kids uh, with our streets and our roads and the biking and the walkers uh, for the 90-year-olds are also safe from that perspective. But the other fun thing that you're touching on is our schools – yeah. have spectacular ratings, A plus across the board. We have one uh, school in Sarasota County that's a charter school it's called Pine View. It is number one private school in the United States, and it's not private. It is so highly thought of from around the world. But you have to live in Sarasota County, you have to be here by April to have your kids enrolled in that school. In Manatee County, we have IMG and also, Dave, what's the name of that um, athletic, uh, the, the competition for IMG, that group that's out in Lakewood Ranch? Do you know their name? I don't. I remembered it, but I don't, do not know. Um, but I know you have so many great schools like St. Stephen's and, and, and Bradenton and IMG. And, you know, my son went to IMG Academy, so I'm familiar with that academy. Uh, but just like you mentioned, so many great things, Pine View. And, you know, I see so many great leaders in industry now. They ended up from Pineview, and they go on to these great, amazing universities, and they come back. Um, so, so many great things going on right now in Sarasota. I, yes, and just for the numbers from Manatee County, the average price was $287,000. Wow. And we had 188 sales, 33 of which were condos. So, we're still seeing single-family homes went out. And we also see in the last five years, the appreciation of those single family homes accelerating more than condos. And the builder sales, which we know is very low that we can read on the MLS because they, they just, I don't think they have time to get it all in there. They're so busy working with um, families and these folks, but Manatee, they had 12 sales. There, there was only one showing on the MLS that was a condo. And in Sarasota, they only showed seven sales, only one of which was a condo. 
Dave and I both agree, and many who are members of the MLS Realtors here, we're seeing that those numbers just aren't as strong as what's actually happening with the buyers who we're walking in there with. So they just can't keep up the numbers. So it's a little bit deceiving, but not completely. We would take that times three or four, wouldn't we? I would definitely say three or four. I was shocked it was that low when you mentioned it a few videos ago, and you're correct, you know, at least three or four. Excellent. So in working with any buyer of any range, if they're going to Longbook Key like the group you just worked with, there's a dynamic because FHA loans only go up to a certain price point in our area. What is that? Yeah, so the maximum FHA loan in Sarasota or Manatee County is 331000 So most FHA loans, you need 3.5% down. So you're right around 345000 kind of tops you out for FHA. But as you can see, the average in Sarasota is 280, and then the average in Manatee is 287,000. So you can still kind of get a nice FHA loan there. Um, but I've been really big on the conventional 3% down. 3% down if you have good credit over 720 FICO score. 3% down is going to get you a lower payment. If you got a below a 700 credit score and you have some challenges, that's okay. We can go down to a 640 credit score, and then the FHA loan. That's where you want to get that loan. It's more lenient. It's more forgiving. So there's a loan for everybody. That's nice. Now, in talking about credit scores, someone might be thinking, oh, I don't think my credit is very good. What do I do about that? Great question. I'm working with a young family now that has a 580 credit score, but I got this new credit simulator, so it's really nice. I can go into the credit, Sandra, and I can play around with it. I'm not a credit repair person, but I know enough to help them get a loan. So if you follow my direction, and I tell you to pay this and do this and give you a plan, within 90 days, their score is going to be at a 680, and then they'll be able to buy a home. So <laughs> as long as you – but you have to start. And that's what you always said. The first step is to get pre-approved so that you know the best loan, you know what the payment is, you know how much money you need. And once you know those basics, at that point, then you can decide where they want to live. Is Sarasota better? Is Manatee better? Do I want a new home? Do I want more established with trees? and things like that, but you have to start somewhere and, and that's getting pre-approved for a mortgage. Exactly, and that's just a phone call away for you and I. I refer you a lot of business and I have a spreadsheet for you this morning, but what's your telephone number where they can get a hold of you? A lot of them will messenger and text, but messenger seems to be working really well. You can messenger Sandra LaFlamme Realtor and I'll get that information to you from Dave. Or you can, uh, how do they messenger you, Dave? Yeah, the best thing is I, I do a lot of text messaging. So the best number would be 941-724-7653. Send me a message. I also have a great convenient online application that I can send out to you. So if you didn't want to spend five minutes on the phone, you can just fill it out at your convenience. But it's a great starting point. And get started, right? You have to get started and take advantage. You know, I'll leave you with this thought. It's only $4 per thousand. So you figure $4 for a hundred thousand, it's only $400, you know, on principal and interest. Now you still have your taxes and insurance, but if you think about $4 per thousand, there's never been a better time to take advantage of these great deals. Thank you for making it so simple for me to understand. And I'm going to use that <laughs> for the rest of my career when I'm talking to somebody, $4. Well, it's, 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 for you when you're out there, I know the market's tied. You have these buyers that I know they don't want to overpay. You're getting them great deals. But sometimes you're about $5,000 $5, away from saying yes or no, making it happen. And I always tell them five times four is only $20. So for an extra $20 per month, a tank of gas, pretty much you can get in the neighborhood that you want. So I hate to see people walk away from the home of their dreams for such a little bit of money because they don't know. They don't know it's just a little bit of money. So just a, just that's a good rule of thumb. Thank you for that. That's awesome. I appreciate you and have a great Monday morning. Take care, you Dave. You too, Sandra. Good have job. a great day. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.